We'd like to welcome the worldwide congregation from around the world, Chiloquin. So just for those of you watching online this week, in the last 22 months, um, we've had several thousand views on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're in 120 countries. We've started 10 house churches here in the Chiloquin area. We've had 129 people sign the Lamb's Book of Life. Hundreds of decisions for Christ online. We catch them, God cleans them, and He keeps them. Amen? Amen. Not our job to clean anybody. Amen? You'll, you'll do a horrible job if you try to clean somebody. But the Lord does a good job because He loves us. Amen? Would you agree with that? Yeah. So the last few weeks we've been teaching on the mind. And the longer I'm in ministry, um, even though my full-time job, I do in-home uh, physical therapy with people. That's what I do for a living. Um, but my passion is seeing people get healed spiritually. Amen? Amen? So we've been talking about the mind the last few weeks. And so the title of my message tonight is Mental Advantage in 2021. So if you missed last week's message, you can go to Last Day's Harvest Ministries on our YouTube channel and click on subscribe and there's 150 services on there. So if you want to watch a little bit more, they're there. Amen. So the title of my message tonight is Mental Advantage in 2021 Part 2. You need to realize when you follow Christ, you have a mental advantage. The Lord can help you mentally and emotionally. And the definition of advantage is a condition that puts one in a superior position. Now, I don't know about you, but I've went through a lot of mental situations throughout my lifetime. I left home in eighth grade, and uh, so you can kind of tell how the childhood was up until eighth grade. So just because you're looking at somebody, never judge the book by the cover, because you'll always make a mistake. Nobody knows what we've been through except us. Just because we're smiling, just because we've made it a little bit better, you have no idea where we came from. Amen? Yeah. We're supposed to love people, not judge them. Amen. So, um, I'm going to read you a story out of a book that I've been reading, and it's called The Starfish Story. And uh, I think you'll like it. I got to get to page 21 here. So this is called the starfish story. The gist of the story is that a man walks along the beach one morning after a storm had watched thousands of starfish ashore. As the man walks, he sees a boy at a distance stooping down and doing something. When he gets closer, the man realizes that the boy is picking up starfish, one by one. Now remember, there's thousands of starfish on this beach stranded. And here's this little boy picking up these starfish one at a time, uh, one by one, and throwing them back into the water. Surprised by the boy's actions, the man says to him, there are thousands of starfish stranded as far as the eye can see, what possible difference can it make? The boy holds up a starfish he just picked up and looks at it for a moment, then he tosses it into the sea and replies, it makes a big difference to this one. <laughs> a lot of us don't realize the impact we have when we help one person. Yeah. Yeah. When we help one person through a situation. God gives you the mental advantage so you can start by impacting one life. I had a person ask me about our house churches this week. I was actually going to do physical therapy with a person in this home. And another person in the home said, hey, Randy, here you've got 10 house churches in the basin. And they started asking me about the house churches. And the person said, how close, they asked me how close they were to them. I didn't invite them to our Saturday night service or to a house church. I pointed at the floor in their house and said, 
This is your house church. You've been in church for years. It's time for you to reach out and touch your neighbors. Mm -hmm. That was the first time in my life I didn't invite somebody to my church. I didn't invite them to one of the house churches. This person had been sitting in church their whole life. And by now they should be teaching people. We actually have three more house churches that are going to start by the end of this month. So it's working. So some of you might have just came and said, you know, I'm just coming for a wedding. Why is this big mouth talking? <laughs> well, they might have set you up. you got to burn those two at the stake, not me. Amen. <laughs> but some of you thought you were coming for a wedding tonight, and the Lord might be knocking on your door that your house or a friend of yours' house needs to become a church. Mm -hmm. Because you've been sitting in church for years, bawling and squalling and whining and moaning, and picking and this and that, well, guess what? Why don't you be a servant in your home and show us what you got? Amen? Amen? Yeah. You're getting a little pushy, Rand. Yeah, I got the microphone. <laughs> so I looked at this person in their home and said, you have no excuse anymore. Mm -hmm. See, what's happened is we hire a pastor. By the way, I don't get paid a dime to come out here. Don't want any money. Don't need your money. Keep your money. Spend it on yourself. I don't care. Don't need it. Mm -hmm. I have a great job. Amen? Mm -hmm. I come out here because I want to for the last 22 months. Amen. That's right. But when I looked at this person, they've been in church their whole lives, and the Bible says we should be making disciples by now. Would you agree? Yeah. In 30 plus years of ministry, I get it. <clears throat> it's time for the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry. See, we hire a pastor, we put this guy behind the pulpit, and then we sit here and say, you know what, you do the work of the ministry, and I'm going to watch what you do. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We've messed everything up with that structure. <laughs> We're supposed to equip you, and you do the work of the ministry together with us. Amen? That's right. Amen. That's right. But you might have never sat in a church before where somebody said, you know what? Your home is the church. Mm -hmm. Well, Randy, I don't want a title. Neither do I. Just be a servant. Amen. I guarantee you, every one of you knows a handful of people that are crushed right now. They're hurting. They're wounded. They'll never walk into a brick and mortar. They will never walk in here on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning because of the carnage of soda. Yeah. Am I preaching the truth? Amen. But guess what? If you invited them into your home, they would be there in a minute. Mm -hmm. So I triple dog dare you to give God one hour a week mm -hmm. where you invite somebody into your house or you go to their house and say, you know what? We're going to read the Bible. What? <laughs> I triple dog dare you to put your tongue on that frozen pole, man. I'll pour the water on it to get you off of there. Now let me say something. When you've been dead twice, I ain't got nothing to lose. See, God sent me back to love on you. Amen. To encourage you. It's not my job to beat you up. It's my job to motivate you. Amen. Amen. I'm just the mailman tonight. You can look at the package. You can leave the package here. But guess what's going to happen if one of the visitors tonight, we get a phone call and says... Randy, we're starting a house church at our house. How do I do that? <laughs> Satan's going to pull his horns off and tie a knot in his tail. <laughs> it's time for the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry, and it starts in your home. All right, let's talk a little bit about, I'm just going to take a few minutes, mental advantage. I always tell young preachers, don't milk the cow too long. Amen? Amen. So the reason you have a mental advantage is because the Lord knew you before you were born. So let's go to Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. Don't worry about having a Bible. I'll read it to you. The average attention span of an adult in America is seven seconds. So I lost most of you a long time ago. So you're going to have to rein it in. And pull it back. Right. 
Like I said, Mike and Sally's fault. We thought the service started at 6. It did. The church service part. You have 75,000 thoughts a day. You check your cell phone 400 times a day. 75,000 thoughts a day and you have a tension span of 7 seconds. So you got to really focus or your mind is going to start to drift. My butt hurts. My back hurts. This hurts. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm sleepy. <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. You, yeah. you, you can handle it. You can handle it. Jeremiah, see, I, I'm not paid to be here. You didn't hire me. You can't fire me. I have a whole different program when you're sitting in front of somebody that's here because they love you. Amen. 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 When I grew up in high school and stuff, all the Christians were a joke. People would be inviting me to church. They were all drunk, high on drugs. Oh, Randy, you need to go to church and become like me. I said, if I ever decide to become a Christian, I'm going all in. So I didn't deal with that. Because who was trying to show me to Christ? It didn't look too good. Uh -huh. yeah. But remember, the Lord will take you where you're at. Yeah. You don't have to be perfect, but be available. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God already has your life planned out. Result, if you seek Him with all your heart, He'll prosper you. He'll not harm you. He'll give you hope and a future. There are going to be some starfish who are stranded by a storm in life. Some of you tonight are a starfish and you're stranded on the shore. You might not know it. But you need something to pick you up and throw you back in the water. Amen. Amen. All right. So some people are going to get thrown back in the ocean today, I declare it. Amen. So I'm going to share a little testimony with you, especially for the visitors to bring this real. I'd taken a bunch of youth out in a bad part of Modesto. We were out street ministering. And one of the junior hires came up to me and said, Randy, we just prayed with the owner of this bar over here and he got saved. I said, you guys were in that bar? They said, no, he was outside smoking a cigarette. We picked him off. <laughs> so keep smoking those cigarettes, man. You might get picked off. So this is where it gets powerful. The starfish story. He goes, Randy, I want you to come preach in my bar right now. It's Friday night and it's karaoke night. I don't know if you've ever been in a bar on a Friday night in Modesto, California, but the last thing they want is to hear somebody talking about Jesus. Amen. I got an amen finally from the big guy in the back. So I walk in there and the place is packed. The, this bar is as big as to the back doors. It's packed to the rafters. And all of a sudden I asked the bar owner, is there any Christian music on this karaoke? He goes, there's one Christian song on the karaoke machine. He said, Amazing Grace. I said, that'll work. <laughs> so I got two of my worship team girls in their early 20s that can sing the paint off the wall in any building. And those girls got up there and sang Amazing Grace in that bar. Shut it down. You could hear a pin drop in there. I got up and shared my testimony for about four minutes. A six foot two Hispanic gentleman. I said, if anybody would like to receive Christ, I'll be standing right here. The six foot two Hispanic gentleman, about 300 pounds, came out of the back corner, shoving people in the face, picking up tables, throwing them out, throwing chairs out of the way. And he got right in my face. And he says, Randy, I'm a six degree black belt. I could kill you right now. I'm like, well, if you're the dude, let's dance. Let's dance. He said, Randy, I cussed God all the way here. He goes, I got out of my pickup truck. 
I cussed God in the parking lot. He goes, I got my alcohol. I cussed God in this bar. And this is what he said. He goes, God, if you're and he cussed him, we know the word he was using. If you're so beep, beep and so beep, beep and awesome loving, send somebody in this bar tonight to preach and I'll get saved. Oh, you can give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. This six foot two, 300 pound man started bawling so heavy that as we prayed, my forearms were covered with his tears. He absolutely was a starfish. Yeah. And I looked over and this guy was sitting at the bar drinking a Heineken. He goes, can I get saved too? <laughs> Love it. See, to me, this stuff's not a joke. I've been in San Jose and had a 9mm Beretta stuffed in my face. But you know what? A soft word always turns away wrath. One more thing out of the book. And I thank you guys for listening. Because I know this puts you in a hard position. Because a lot of us have a lot of stuff on our mind about a setting like this. But you know what? It shows me how much God loves you. That he set you up. <laughs> that guy didn't expect me to walk in that bar and preach. Mm -hmm. But Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Listen to this quote. Dare to dream, but please also do. For dreamers are many but doers are few. God has a vision for your life and you are the one to walk it out. You are the doer. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. And hang in there with me. Hang in there with me. You're going to stand before the Lord one day. Trust me. The moment I died... You're a thousand times more alive when this dirt bag goes away. You're seeing, you're hearing, your awareness when you step into that tunnel. I call it tunnel time. <laughs> Jeremiah 1, 4 through 9. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. The last sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm too young. You must go everywhere I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. You go preaching in a bar in Modesto on a Friday night karaoke night, you best not be afraid. Because some big 300 pounder is coming out of the corner to clean your plow. Unless Jesus told you to be there. Amen? Amen. Verse 9. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Advantage. God knows you and God has set you apart. You can talk to people that would not give me the time of day. You can invite people into your home that will never darken the door of a church, but you can talk to them about Jesus. This is the next great revival is God moving in the houses. Amen. Amen. You, some of you already know that. Mm -hmm. So advantage. He knew you. He set you apart. Randy, what is another mental advantage that God has given me? Let's go to Psalms. Now listen, we've only been going here for 40 minutes total. So hang on. I'm going to be short and sweet, but you've got to press in. Psalms 119, 104 to 105. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Illustration. You have a quarterback on a football team. 
When he walks up to the offensive line, he turns on the floodlight. He looks at the stadium, he looks at the field, he looks at the defense, he looks at the offensive line. He, he's, he's got his floodlight on, but guess what happens? When he needs to throw the ball to the receiver, he's got to narrow his vision down. Many of you spend your life in that dreamer floodlight stage, but eventually God wants to focus you with the flashlight on the Word. Amen? Because that's what's going to give you guidance. God's Word helps you focus the flashlight. It's all right to have a floodlight view, but at the end of the day, you have to focus in on your path. Amen? Amen. I used to tell young people in Stockton, your friends can laugh you into hell, but they can't laugh you out. A lot of people find out that I've been a minister now for over 30 years. They go, Randy Hatwick, a minister? Are you crazy? <laughs> All right, last scripture verse. That'll help some of you that are going, Jesus, please shut him up. <laughs> He's listening. Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through that. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. You are going to finish well your advantage. God has begun the good work in you, and He will be faithful to complete it. Salvation is free. Discipleship will cost you the rest of your lifetime. I always tell people, don't get saved to not go to hell. You'll be afraid your whole life. Get saved because someone loves you unconditionally. Amen? Amen. Anybody starts ramming hell down your throat, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> you get saved to be loved. Don't get saved to not go to hell. Get saved because you get unconditional love. Nobody will ever be able to take that away from you. Amen? Amen. Trust me, I grew up Southern Baptist and Assemblies of God. You were going to hell every Sunday. <laughs> and you thought you were going, I, you know what? I'm getting some nods from the visitors. <laughs> I, I must have the right crowd. So Southern Baptist Assemblies of God, I was bad postal, man. I was going to hell every weekend. Oh, those poor people. Salvation is free. Discipleship will cost you the rest of your lifetime. Turn on your flashlight. Focus on your path. Take advantage of God's plan for your life. Don't just be a dreamer. Be a doer. Your best days are ahead of you. Now, we're going to give an invitation. There's, there's thousands of people that will be watching this this week. They're actually watching right now. We just got to put it online. So we're going to give an altar call right now for these online to recommit their life or give their life to Christ for the first time. And maybe that's something you want to do tonight as well. So as I talk to the camera audience, Romans 10, 9 says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you'll be saved. Now the Bible says in the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit will be poured out on the earth and people will just cry out the name of Jesus and they'll be saved. So, those of you watching online, those of you here in the congregation, we're going to pray a simple prayer. And if you want to pray this prayer with us, just participate. So let's just bow our heads and just, this is the prayer that the guy prayed in the bar. Same prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I believe, I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross, and that you died, and that you died, and paid for my sins, and paid for my sins. Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that you rose again, that you rose again on the third day, on the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you, I ask you into my heart, into my heart as my Lord and Savior, as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with us, put that heart emoji on the Facebook page. Contact us. We love you. We're getting ready to do Mike and Sally's wedding. So all of you all around the world, 
Pray for Mike and Sally this week. Amen. Blessing, blessing. Love you guys. See you next week.